churn is something we all want to minimize. The lower churn, the better. But how do we do it? With Usify, you can build product tours that takes your visitors and your customers through an entire journey of your product. Let me show you. This is the useful platform where we have a quick overview of what we have going at the moment with our checklist, smart tips and our tours. Then we can see our trends down here and some inspiration if you need in order to build your product tours. Up in the menu here we have content, we have reports, themes and a marketplace. But let's start out with the tours, the main functionality of useful. I've made one tour here already which has been running for some days now. Right now it has three steps, the welcome step, the sign up for beta and the feedback step. And this is how you build out a tour. So let's go back and try and build a new one from the beginning. So up here I will add the tour and then you can see we have the same welcome screen as you just saw before. The buttons are start tour or close. Let's call this one skip tour instead. So here you can see we have some different options we can choose, but I will show you that on the next steps. So let's add a step and this is going to be a pointer. So on my website, I have a button called open beta program as a class. And that's what I want to point this one to. So I will say open beta program. This is the element that this pointer needs to focus on. So you can see the type is pointer. The title here, let's call this one beta step instead. And then over here is where we can write the content. So here I can write something like sign up for. And now you can see that it can progress on three different ways, except for the click of button. You can be click on element. It can be click anywhere on the screen or it can be the next step trigger. So if I choose click of button, then whatever element that I have pointed my current model to, will be the way that they will move on to the next step. You can also choose the next button. Let's say it's just a text element they need to read, then you choose the next button. But in this case, I will choose the click off button. And here we have our alignments of the buttons. That's just whether you want them in the left or in the right side or in center. And then we have down here the buttons that we can name previous or next. I will add one more step so I will keep these previous and next. Down here you can see that we can choose the trigger and the trigger can be multiple things. It can be the URL that it equals to, it can be an element and then you choose here whether the user should click on the element, whether the user should hover on the element and a lot more different options. You can really customize this. You can also auto skip this specific step and you can collect feedback. So this is just a happy, medium, sad faces that you use to gather feedback for you, which is very valuable. And that's what we're going to do in the last step. So you can see the first step is the welcome step. The second step is the beta program. And now the third step is just going to be a model where I ask for some feedback. So I will call this step feedback. The alignment is fine. And then we have down here, collect feedback. Over here, I will ask a questions regarding to the feedback. And now I will change the next button to submit feedback because now they will finish. You can see we have three steps over here, the welcome step, the beta step and the feedback. Now, what do you do if you have a lot of elements which are basically the same, but you want to only track one of them? They have a Chrome extension for this. So let's try and go to the website where I have the tour right now. So here you can see the tool we've just built. I can start it. Now it is pointing at my beta button. I can press next and then it's asking for feedback. I will give feedback and then I will finish the tour. Now I want to show you this Chrome extension. So in the bottom here, you can see that we have all smart tips and checklists here that we can show all published content or all smart tips and checklists. And then we can also start the preview. Then we can restart the preview and then here we can navigate, but we can also select elements. So with the selector, you can see that we get the different routes to the specific buttons and elements that we want to track. So let's say I want to track this button right here. Then I hover over the button and then I just click. So now it's copied. So if I return now, 
to here and I change the step two to point at this specific button instead, you can see now it has been added. And that's how you do it. You can also go through here where you saw I just clicked, enter your URL and then find the specific button. Let's try that for a moment. So now you can see that the Chrome extension is already enabled. And then let's say I want to track this one again. Then I click, then it automatically go back, fills out the path to the specific button. And now I'm ready to save this specific tour. So I'll save and exit. And now you can see that it's ready up here to be published. I've already published this one down here. So I'll just keep this one as it is. That's how easy it is to build a tour. Now let me show you the smart tips. Because a smart tip is basically like a tool tip where you can just control everything within Useful. So let's try and create a smart tip. Again, we have the element up here where we can choose what button or what element we want to track. So I'll just open the page and then I'll go down and say I want to track this specific headline right here. I will use tip as the headline and then here in the text I will write it's so important you read this. Orientation I will put automatic. That means whether you want the box to be on the left, the right, the top or the bottom. I will always recommend you to take automatic unless you really want it on a specific side. Here in the hotspot beacon you can choose whether it needs to be pulsing or just normal. So you can see we got a little hotspot beacon here. Let's try and save this one. We can also preview it. Go to the website. And now you can see that there is a little hotspot. That is to show that behind this headline, there is something specific that you need to see. And by hovering, you can see the tip that we just made. But this tip is not styled properly. So let's try and take a look at that. If I go back to the tip here, I can edit it. But up in settings is where we choose the theme. I have made a theme called YouTube video. And if I choose that, then you can see that the tip has now changed. So the styling is more relevant for my website and the themes we control over here. So you can see within the theme, we can control the colors. We can control typography and then we can control the button position. Right now, they only have six different fonts you can use. And I know they're working on adding Google fonts, so we will get a ton of different fonts. But what you can do until now is you can use custom CSS and in here you can import the Google font and then use it this way, but it's not so convenient. So it will be good when they change that. Let's try and go back to the content because I also want to show you the checklists. The checklist is also what you see down here in the right corner. It is specific items that the visitor or the customer needs to go through. And you are sure that if they go through this checklist, then they have understood your product. Let's just try and close this one and close the panel down here. Let's try and add a checklist. The design is the same as we saw before. We have the different items out here. We can add as many as we want. And then here is where you choose the step one. Could this one be? And then the actions is in this case to start a tour. And I'll just start the untitled tour here. You can also open a URL can also be the checklist point. And as soon as they click and they start the tour, then they have checkmarked that. And that is what you can at the moment. So you can open URLs and you can start tours. I really want them to elaborate this so we in the future can get them to click on specific forms. They need to fill out a form. They need to read a specific element to understand something specific about a feature that we have. We just need more actions for this specific checklist because overall the idea is great. But if we can open a URL and we can start a tour, that's just too limited of the functionality. So now let's move on to the reports and the reports are also very simplified because we can see how many assists has we had in the last 30 days, how many have started the tour and how many completed the tour. So out of everyone who visited the website, 50% started the tour and out of those 50%, 50% completed the tour. And down here you can see that we have one view on the last step and five views on the first step, which is pretty normal because a lot of them just click the tour and close it. So here you can see the different steps. You can see that we have three on the first step, which doesn't really align with the graph up here, but we have three. Then we have one on the sign up for beta step, and then we have one on the feedback step. Down here in the user feedback, we can see what feedback they give us. And even though I clicked on the feedback, we can't see it down here at the moment. So maybe that's a bug they're working on. 
but that's the very simple reporting module. The last thing I want to show you is the marketplace. And the marketplace doesn't bring so much value to me, but what they have done is that they have just gathered different products to bring more value to Useful. So you can see that they have partnered up with Servio. Of course, they have their own product. Then they have IMG Vision. They have Unsplash and some more that you can use. And this is to bring up the value of your product tours. You can take a look at it and you can even offer your own app if you want to. Before we move on to the pricing model, I just want to show you how you install it. Because when you install Usedify, you can choose whether you want to identify users across devices. You can see then you need to add the user ID. You can even segment the users. You can see here we have trial users, maybe new users, churned users, etc. You can target specific languages, user roles, and you can personalize your content. So here you can see that if the first name of the user is John, in your steps you can write, Hi John, this is the first step you need to go through in this checklist, just as an example. And when you have chosen what you want to track on, then you just copy the code and insert it into your head element, just like we know it from Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. You can also enable this via Google Tag Manager. The product tour industry is quite expensive normally, but with Usedify you can get started completely free and you get 2000 assists and one product tour in the free plan and that should be enough for you to test it out. And then when you're sure whether you want to use Usedify or not, you can later on upgrade to one of their paid plans. But now let me move over to the alternatives that I want to talk a little bit about. The top alternatives as I see it is AppQs and WalkMe. Both of these products has been in the industry longer than Usedify and you also see it in the pricing because they are a lot more expensive. And this is what we usually see in the product tour industry. That we see these high prices on the products and it's because they bring a lot of value but it does also require a lot of server power and it is just expensive to build these products. But if you want a solid product that just works every time, has all the features you need, then go with WalkMe. Otherwise, try Usify out because it is cheap and they build features all the time. So maybe in the near future, it will be for you. Now, as Usify is not mature yet, they are still working on a lot of features. And I want to highlight some of them for you. The first one is an assistant they're working on. This assistant will pull in content from your website and showcase to the user to help them better understand your product. Then they're working on some technical APIs so you can really build it into your system and to your workflow. Then they're working on an NPS score which you can also enable. And then overall they're trying to improve the entire product to a system with announcements. Now one thing I wish that they focus more on is the product tour. Because the product tour is the main product that they have and I still feel that they have a long way to go. Let's take their Chrome extension for instance. It would be so much easier if I could pinpoint my entire product tour only using the Chrome extension. Right now I have to shuffle between the platform and the Chrome extension. That's just one point. And just more customization would also help a lot. Now moving on to the pros and cons, starting with the pros. You get a lot of value for what you pay and they have a great checklist module. Whereas for the cons, I'm really worried for the roadmap because it's all over the place. They're focused on an NPS score, an assistant, and I really just want them to focus on one thing, building the greatest product tours that they can. Then the customizations options are very low and the analytics is just not extensive enough. I don't know what step the users are falling off in the product tour. Even though Useful is new in the market, they have really come far. The functionality is good, but we just need more customization options to build gamification pop-ups and tours. That's why I want to give Useful three stars. Thank you so much for watching. Let's catch up on the next one.